ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentle them, welcome in to another Lost Ark guide. Today, we're going to be talking all about engravings. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows? I might even be streaming right now. The engraving system, much like many things in Lost Ark, are actually quite simple when you understand them, but when you first encounter them can be incredibly overwhelming. And I'm seeing a confusion around engravings, how they work all over the place, getting in my stream and comments. So in today's video, we're gonna break down all the mysticism around engravings, what they are, how you can build them for your character and what you can expect. Let's start simple by explaining what are engravings. Engravings are simply just another system that exists in the game allow you to customize the strength and play style of your character. If you ever want to know what engravings are available, you can go to your extra engravings on your character sheet, click on it, open it up, and there's two different categories that you can browse through and figure out what you want to put in for your build. The first is combat engravings, which are general engravings that every class has access to, and they have a wide range of effects and bonuses and benefits. Likely, if you've made it this far into the game, you've probably started building your character a certain way. Maybe you've experimented or maybe you've looked online and you found recommended builds and they all say pick up grudge or pick up spirit absorption that all do different things. And they have on this listing here an effect with three different levels of strength. Additionally, you can get class engravings, which right now every class in the game has two that are available. And these are isolated to just the class you're playing. No other class has access to them because they affect that class specifically. So depending on what class you're on, you'll get a choice of two different class engravings. Now they're so powerful that every class in the game uses them for the most part. And they have a major effect on not only how your class plays, but also the efficacy of different parts of its kit. In many ways, your build is determined by your class engraving because they're very opposite choices. And you can say, for example, for Shadowhunter, I want to be demon form. I want to be no demon form. And that is the higher level decision that decides how your build is going to be comprised. And then all the other systems come in to amplify and modify that decision. So what does an engraving do? They all have different effects, but they have these three different ranks on them. As you rank up your engravings, you will be able to activate greater and greater strengths of the engraving effect that you're looking at. So how do you activate each rank of the engraving? If you go to your character profile and you click on the engraving tab, you'll be able to see all of the active engravings and how many engraving points you currently have. These are denoted by the small diamond inside of each engraving and it's equalized across the board. Every engraving in the game needs five engraving points of that engraving to activate each rank. So level one requires five points, level two requires 10 points, and level three requires 15 points. So your goal is to, through your equipment and through your engraving bonuses, collect enough points of the engravings you want to rank them up to the ranks you're looking for. So how do you get engraving points? The only ways to get engraving points are from your accessories. So your necklace, your two earrings, your rings all have a random engraving effect when they drop. And this is part of the gearing process. You'll be looking for accessories that not only have the stat you're looking for in bonus effect, but also the engravings you want. And as you get later into the game, these accessories can drop with higher amounts of engraving points, which means it allows you to get more engravings to higher ranks. Uh, even with the same restriction. Next, you'll be able to get engraving points from your ability stone. These drop from many places, and the RNG from this aspect is the quality that you get, and then you have to take it to an ability stone cutter to cut it and try and amplify the stats. But we'll go through the process of cutting the ability stones in a minute. For right now, understand that the ability stones will drop uncut, which means they cannot be equipped. However, once you go to a, a ability stone cutter, you cut the stone and then you can equip it. You'll get the uh, stats that come along with it, as well as the engraving points, which can activate more engravings for you. And lastly, your wild card option for getting engraving points is your two engraving bonuses. These are sometimes called imprints, but it depends on the translation and who you talk to. These are the two little equipment bubbles you have on your equipment page right under your weapon, and you can double up the same engraving to get more points out of it. So if you go to your engraving bonus, 
book, this collection that you have here, you can click and drag an engraving that you want to either one of these slots and you can have duplicates. Now, the way this works is you'll go through the world collecting books that teach you the engraving, which means you have it permanently and you can equip it whenever you want. The first level of this engraving bonus gives you three points per equip slots. You can actually get level one of that engraving in your uh, engraving bonus book, your imprint book, and you can drag it to your equipment bar and equip two of them and get six points, which immediately activates level one of that engraving, which you will see a lot of people doing in tier one when they want a class engraving or some specific engraving. When you get that engraving bonus to level two, it'll be worth six points and then nine points, and then finally 12 points. So you can actually get a significant portion of points from this engraving bonus system. And this is kind of your way to allow your gear to have more variants in it. If this didn't exist, you would have to get exactly the right ability points on every single slot of your ability stones and your accessories without any leeway. But because you have such a big bonus of points coming from your engraving bonus book, you can actually then play around with more options with your gear, which allows you to make your build and have more variety. And since we know there's two different kinds of engravings, combat engravings, which are general and available to everyone, and class engravings, which are only available to your class, it makes sense that the acquisition of these books come in two different categories as well. You'll find these books through many drops of activities, your dailies, your riffs, whatever it is. You'll be collecting these books as you play, but you'll also have the ability to collect even more powerful options, which is the satchels and the chests. Satchels allow you to open it up and choose one of the engravings listed in there, and then it allows you to kind of pick and choose and get the engraving you want for your engraving bonus collection. And the, uh, ungra the engraving recipe chest is the exact same for class. Now, the way this works here is green is level one, and then you'll get blue, which is level two, and so on and so forth. And you'll have to go to all the way down to purple and then legendary. However, a couple caveats that are good to know as you are building your engraving collection bonus uh, book is that you have to get each rank before you can consume the engravings of the next. So if you have no engraving points, uh, you have no level on that engraving in your collection, you will have to get all of the, all 20 of the green books to unlock the next rank then get 20 blue ones to unlock the next rank, so on and so forth. And the process of getting all the way to legendary where you can get 12 points from each bonus uh, takes a long time and is quite expensive, but it's pretty easy to get through green and blue just so you have the option of stacking up those engraving points freely. And it really is that simple. You'll see a progress meter inside your engraving collection uh, where you'll see how many you've collected. Each engraving requires 20 of a rank before it ranks up. And you'll see how many you've collected. And as you do activities, these will drop constantly. Abyss dungeons drop them a bunch as well. And then once you have 20 of a rank, it ranks up and that rank becomes available for you to equip into your engraving bonus slot. And the cool thing is that when you collect these, these are actually roster wide for every character that exists on the server you're currently playing on has access to the same collection of engravings that you can pull from with those books. So anytime you do activities on any of your characters and the engraving books drop or you get one of the satchels or the chest, you'll then add to your roster wide or your server wide collection of engravings. And this is kind of why some people like running multiple of the same class because they will, you know, they'll rely on the same engravings although I don't recommend doing so, but that is one of the reasons why people play that way. You'll find that early on in the game, there aren't that many engraving points available. Usually people will just get 20 of rank one in their engraving collection and then add it to their bar in the equipment and then just get level one or level two, or maybe even go to level three and get nothing else. But as you go later into the game, points become more available and your build becomes more defined. So if you're looking online for builds and you're finding that they say, three grudge, three keen blunt master, uh, three adrenaline. It means that they want rank three of each of those. And when you finally get there, that's what you're looking for out of your accessories, your ability stone and your engraving slots. Now let's talk about cutting an ability stone. They will drop in a raw form uncut and cannot be equipped. You then need to find an ability stone cutter. If you look on your map in any major city, you'll see this uh, blue teal gem icon with the name Ability Stone Cutter next to it, and you'll find them standing in the gear upgrade area. 
If you go up and talk to them, it'll ask you for one of the stones that you have available to cut. When you click on one of the available stones, it'll show you two options for ability improvement and an option that's red for reduced abilities. So the way this works is a distribution of chances. And you're probably wondering, why don't I just get the perfect ability stone, equip that and be done with it? So the faceting part of this, the cutting of the stones, is what makes you want to farm many, 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 many ability stones looking for the one that has the best distribution, the correct uh, engravings on it, and is cut with the most fortune in your favor. So when you first come on this, you will start with a success rate of 75%. You'll see that each one of these engravings include the negative detrimental one. This one is move speed reduction. You'll find one red one in there. So that as you have your success rate, you're gambling on whether you want to try to cut in favor of one of the good ones or one of the bad ones. And every time you make a cut, the success rate will change either by going up 10% or going down 10%. So as you click through this, you'll see that we have, so we have Cursed Doll here, Master Tenacity. It starts at 75%, which is pretty high. So we're going to try and cut that. And it succeeded. So now that this stone is partially cut, it will have one point of Cursed Doll on it, which means if I equip this right now, uh, assuming it was done, I would get a point for Cursed Doll, getting me closer to getting five points and getting another rank of it. But you see that when I cut, it goes down by 10%. So if I cut again on the same one, it succeeded. It went down by 10% again, but now I have two points of Cursed Doll. So the reason there's a negative exists on this completely is as the, the system goes up and down randomly on what success you will get on your next cut your goal is to spend as many of the low percentages that you can on the negative effect and as many of the high percentages as you can on the good the two engravings that you're looking for to add on that stone and you will continue this process until all of the ability the engraving slots the engraving point slots here are consumed so now it's 55, we can go through the rest of the process. If I'm looking for Cursed Doll as my primary engraving, I will spend usually, at least for me, I like to do 65 and 75 on the one I want until it gets enough points. And then I'll do 55 on the one that I kind of want or I kind of care about. If it drops below 55, I tend to try and spend those down here. So then we do a 45 down on this one and it failed, which is awesome. So now that means we have two points, two engraving points for Cursed Doll one engraving point for Master Tenacity, and because it failed on the negative one, we didn't get any negative points for this, so this negative engraving won't have this point here. Now we're back to 55, let's roll again on the second one, and it failed, which means we don't get the point there, but that's why we don't do the higher ones on the one we want. It went up to 65%, so now we're going to do one more on that, and it succeeded, so that's pretty lucky. So now we have three points on Cursed Doll, down a little bit. We're going to try again. It failed on Master Tenacity. It went back up with the success rate. We finished that. We got another point there. This is going extremely well. We'll do 55 on that one. It succeeds. 45 on this one. Unfortunately, we get a negative point there. And you have to complete the whole process. So you'll go through. You can see how it stays low. We kind of run that on that. Um, and you can still succeed on the good ones, but you have to get through all the cuts. And once you're done, then that ability stone becomes cut and can be equipped. So we ended up with five points in Cursed Doll, three points in Master's Tenacity, and three points in Move Speed Reduction. So we can click OK and we go into our inventory and now we can equip this stone into our Ability Stone slot and it'll give us the base stats of Vitality plus the bonus we got for succeeding at the cutting process. And then when I have this Ability Stone equipped, I have five more points in Cursed Doll and I have the extra points, the three points in Master's Tenacity, and I have the three points in move speed reduction. So as we recall earlier, since you need five points for the rank to activate, even if you have four points of a negative engraving, it doesn't do anything because it's still below threshold and we're able to get Cursed Doll activated, which is a pretty popular perk, not for <laughs> Paladin, but definitely for a lot of classes that like having the extra attack power scaling. As your stones go up in rarity, you get more points total available as well as more of the vitality stat on the stone itself. So you can see that our blue has much less vitality. And if you look at a blue, it has less points allocated. A purple will have zero to plus eight is the max, the max available. And then a legendary has zero to plus nine. And so you'll be able to see that as you go higher and higher, you can get relic ones available as well. And that gives you, this is zero to plus six. So the higher your ability stone is, 
the more points available for the cut. And so you're always looking for the perfect ability stone with the two engravings you want, with the negative turned off or as low as possible, and then you're just going through the process of collecting more and cutting them. Which goes to show how powerful the ability stone slot is, because even just this one we cut for this video, I got plus five cursed doll, which immediately activated rank one of the engraving. So oftentimes I still see people with no ability stone in their slot here. Uh, they just don't know the system exists or they haven't played around with it. Please get your ability stones cut, equip them. The higher rarity ones give you more uh, vitality, which is more HP, which is a huge chunk. You see how much my HP changed just for getting this blue one here on my alt. So you're able to get a lot of value out of that. And then your jewelry will give it to you as well. And that's the whole engraving system. At a simple level, you're just collecting uh, engraving points to get highest values for the engravings you're looking for. It comes from your jewelry, your necklace, your earrings, your rings, and your ability stone. And it comes from your engraving collection as well. So you'll collect engraving recipes or engraving books, either by buying them on the auction house, doing any kind of content. You'll get those ranked up and then you can slot them in freely as much as you want. You can put them in any slot you want. Uh, and that's the part of the gearing process. You're gonna get plenty from other you know, gem customization, card customization, gear customization, but the engraving system itself is a way to get passive effects that affect your character in meaningful ways. And it's part of how you gear yourself and it's what makes jewelry, ability stones, and your engraving recipes super valuable. Now, if you're fresh 50 and you're looking for more engraving recipes or the engraving books, You'll find those as you do any kind of content for the most part they'll come out of abyss dungeons uh, uh island events adventure islands things like that but the quickest way to get them in the very beginning when you're fresh level 50 is to go around and do all the unique quest lines on all of the islands around the world you'll collect these from uh one time per account and it's highly recommended that you do that uh initially so you can get some and i tend to hold on to these until i'm sure what i want to spend them on uh, and then the rest of the time, once you're done with that initial burst, it'll be harder to get them and they'll come quite randomly. However, there is a nice quest that you can do on every character and get five free class engravings. If you go into Lutera Castle in East Lutera and go up to King Thyrain, he has a quest for you called Memories of Lutera. And when you finish this first quest, it gives you five uncommon class engravings that you can choose. And this is actually able to be done on every character that you have, which means that after four characters, you'll have 20. You can get another class engraving put into your engraving collection, which is pretty awesome. So come here. You just have to walk outside and talk to a vendor or talk to another NPC outside. But that gives you uh, another five free class engravings to build up. And that's how engravings work. If you head over to uh, LOAWA, which is the crane website that tracks players, it's kind of like an armory for some of the higher um, for the highest Korean players that play the game, you can go to their engraving effects and see what engravings they've run. Now, obviously there's a theoretical limit on how many engraving points you can get even at the very end game. So what they choose to get, it's nice to kind of see you can pick through this. And if you go to another website that I highly recommend when you're first starting out is maxroll.gg. There are plenty of guides on here, uh, some for leveling, some for chaos. You can click on build guys, click on the class you are playing and then the category and you'll get a good list here. One of the things I like about maxroll.gg is the fact that you can scroll down to a build that scales how many points you have and you can pick through those, but it will give you the class engravings um, as a recommendation. And this is a good starting point for anyone who's really getting into building their character as they start to learn what they like and don't like and what works for them. Well, that'll do it for the guide today. If you have any questions for me, be sure to stop by my stream and ask. I'm happy to answer any questions you have or even down below in the comments. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.